Hi, my name is Willemieke Kouwenhoven and I did my PhD at the University of Amsterdam in the lab of Martin Smit. Uh, today I will discuss with you very briefly uh, the work that I did as a postdoc uh, in the lab of Louis-Éric Trudeau at the University of Montreal. We recently published uh, our paper in the Journal of Neuroscience. So we're interested in uh, the dopamine neurons that are located within the midbrain, which can be divided into the substantia nigra and the VTA. And specifically in those dopamine neurons that also express VGLU2, the vesicular glutamate transporter. Because the dopamine neurons that, that express this protein have the capacity to package and release glutamate as a secondary uh, neurotransmitter uh, next to dopamine. And this is a very interesting feature in itself, but especially in the context of a neurotoxic lesion. Uh, because, uh, and the neurotoxic lesion can be used to mimic certain aspects of Parkinson's disease. Uh, when using a neurotoxic lesion, first of all, you will specifically uh, create dopaminergic cell loss. And secondly, within the dopamine neurons that are, that are surviving, we will see uh, an increased percentage of dopamine neurons that are now expressing VGLU2. And this suggests uh, that potentially VGLU2 could contribute to uh, supporting the resilience of these dopaminergic neurons. And that's exactly um, the, the research question that we had for my postdoc project and for the paper. Uh, what are the physiological consequences of upregulated VGLU2 in the post lesional brain? Well, one way that we investigated that is by creating an upregulation of VGLU2 in vitro using a lentiviral uh, approach uh, using the VGLU2 venous construct. Uh, in this uh, approach, we created an, a moderate upregulation of VGLU2 and we investigated the morphology of dopamine neurons uh, compared to a venous control uh, uh, infection. Um, here we see that specifically the axons uh, of dopamine neurons that express VGLU2 venous uh, have become uh, larger. And also uh, we observe more branching and using a show analysis, we see that these dopamine neuron, dopaminergic axons are more complex. And this again is specific to the axon and at the dendrite. So using this data and many of the other data points that we had in our paper, uh, we came up with the hypothesis that potentially in the in, the in vivo context of a lesion, the upregulation of VGLU2 could contribute to the axonal outgrowth of the dopaminergic axons um, uh, to reestablish uh, the innervation in the striatum uh, and reestablish the connections that had been cut in uh, due to the lesion. Well, to investigate that hypothesis, uh, we created a partial lesion in wild, wild type animals and in the VGLU2 conditional knockout animals uh, using a neurotoxic, a neurotoxic lesion. Uh, we then let the animals recover for six weeks. Uh, at that point, we injected uh, fluorescent retrobeats, which are beats that will be taken up by the terminals uh, here exactly within the region of the lesion, and then travel back into uh, the soma. Um, and this will allow us to uh, quantify the number of terminals present six weeks after the lesion by just performing immunohistochemistry uh, on the mesencephalon uh, of these animals. And here we hypothesize that um, in absence of VGLU2, uh, fewer retrobeats will be present as fewer terminals were expected to be present due to the hampered reinnovation uh, in the post-lesional brain. And indeed, when we quantify the retrobeats within the midbrain, uh, we observe fewer uh, retrobeats in the VGLU2 conditional knockout compared to their controls. And indeed, we propose here, therefore, that VGLU2 contributes to post lesional striatal re innovation in the context of a lesion. And with that, I would like to invite you to read our paper to understand our work in more detail and more nuance. Um, and I would very much like to thank uh, my colleagues in the Trudeau Lab and all the collaborators of this paper, as well as our funding agency. Thank you.